All right, so some people have been asking me about how my fish tanks are doing, and I basically wanted to just give you an update, at least on a 75-gallon tank. Most of my other tanks I broke down, and I'm taking them down because they're too much work for me to maintain, and I'm just going to just take them down, basically. But I wanted to show you my 75-gallon tank. This is my Wallstead setup, and basically it's been this way for years, almost 10 years now. And I really don't do anything other than cut down the rotellas in the back. You can see there's all this uh, red rotellas all coming up here. This all needs to come out. There's just too much of it right now. But that's going to come out. I'm going to clean up the tank a little bit. I haven't had time to do anything lately. So you, what you'll see me do next is clean out the tank. We'll, we'll pull those out. It's going to look a little shoddy because you can see everything is very overgrown. And uh, once the light hits everything, they do usually lose some leaves. But a lot of this stuff needs to come out now. And so we'll show you before. Maybe I'll show you some of me taking it out. And then we'll show you what it looks like afterwards. And maybe we'll put a little music in there. Uh, there's my angels. She's a little shy. She's a little camera shy. But she's my angel. And uh, she's probably 8 to 10 years old. She's been around forever. And you can see they don't get any bigger because I keep them on a very strict diet. So for an angelfish to remain about the size of a silver dollar uh, for 10 years is actually a technique. It's like dwarfing or, or bonsaiing your fish. You've got to keep them small because if you don't do that, they're going to get real big and they're going to throw out your Wallstead method. So there's a technique I use to keep my angelfish small. If you're interested in me doing a video on how... I keep my, she, she's very shy. She don't like the camera. She don't like the camera. So there's, there is a technique I use to keep the, uh, the angelfish small or most of the other fish that I keep in here very small. But it's a very delicate balance. You can't put too many fish in the tank like this, especially this crowded with plants. Uh, they will fight. You can see over there, I got the uh, sucker. He's basically a sucker and uh, those usually can get 12 to 14 inches big. A lot of people warn me, don't put them in your tank, they get big, and now you got to get rid of them. That fish is still the same size. He was slightly bigger, and he's probably close to 10 years old as well. So th there are techniques you can use to dwarf your fish and keep them generally small. But again, this is how my Wallstead tank is looking. Try to give you an idea you know, what it looks like on a few different angles. There she is again. That's my beautiful black angel. She's my marble. She's a marble angel. And we got the, um, I forgot the names of these plants already. It's been so long. I mean, I got some plants. Some of these plants that are coming up are all, they reproduced and they, they shed, you know, they just, they, I don't know what happened, but some of these plants are coming up on their own. So they, they created tubers or something, and now they're spreading around. Um, but these are my cryptorines. Uh, this is the Anubis, but there are several types of Anubis. This is like a dwarf type of Anubis. This plant's probably 10 years old. And you can see how long my Anubis got. This is another type of an Anubis, I believe, but it's a different type. It's more like a longer leaf type. I have this thing here. I don't remember the name of this this one here. It's not an Anubis. It's a Cryptorine, but it's or it's in the Cryptorine family, but it's really different. Um, I got a sword growing in the back there. That's probably five or six years old. Here's my other Cryptorines. They're all mixed up. I got I probably got about six different species of Cryptorines. You can see my Anubis over here. This Anubis in the back over here. And over here, this thing's probably about 12 inches long already. It's multiple flowers on it. This thing is absolutely enormous. It's, it's, it's incredible how big this Anubis got. I actually have to cut this thing down because it's getting bigger and bigger. And I need to cut this down and maybe I'll sell like maybe uh, two inch sections of it on eBay. So maybe I'm thinking about offering some of those on eBay. Here's my, I, I forgot what this is called. I think it's called Nestles or Nettles or something like that. Nestles, Red Nestles. Uh, this plant's doing very good. That's got to get trimmed back. All the Rotellas, these are all going to come out. I got my Bulbitis. 
Well, you can see part of the bulbitis here. This plant is absolutely enormous. When I got it, it was about a one inch long piece. And now this thing is probably, it's, it's like a tree now. You can't see it because of all this stuff. When I clean it out, we'll go over some of the plants in here. But I'll show you the uh, bulbitis in the background. And I also have uh, some of the, uh, what's that stuff called? The, uh, I, I'll show you some of the plants that are still left. A lot of them got crowded out and are died back. But a lot of them are still doing good. I still got some other species that are popping up that I haven't seen in a long time. So the root systems must have stayed alive and they grew underground. And now they're starting to pop up in different areas. So, yeah, there's some cool stuff going on in here. And unfortunately, this is really bad. Never, if you plan on growing a lot of these lower plants in the background and you don't want to do a lot of maintenance, don't add the rotellas because the rotellas literally take over the tank. You don't mind this kind of a plant because it just grows in like one area and it starts to spread out, but there, it doesn't, it's not as invasive as the rotellas are. I mean, the rotellas literally are just take over the tank and this is only about four months worth of since the last time I ripped them up and I I ripped them you can see how they what they do they run these little runners out along the bottom and then all this stuff comes up and it's killing all my other plants off so this is really got to go this is all this stuff has got to come out I don't want that to end up in here where my cryptorine field is I got like a little cryptorine field like that I don't want that to happen I got to get these out of here so what I do is I let these grow throughout the winter, all these plants. Then I, I pull them out and I, you know, cut them and pull them out as much as I can. And then I rubber band the bottom of them and I put a rock on it and I sink them in my pond. And they grow really huge in the pond. And they also provide food for my goldfish and everything. So that's what we're going to do with these. We're going to add these to the pond. I do that every year and then they die at the end of the year. The fish eat them up and they just die because of the cold weather. But we don't want to lose what we have uh, as far as all the other plants. You can see it's starting to kill off a lot of my other plants back here. And now my Anubis is starting to get, I can't believe the Anubis has actually grown to the point where it's becoming a problem. It's literally taking over my whole tank. It's, it, so that's another thing that's got to go. Now I do have Pelia. I do believe I have the Schragensborg. Pelia should still be left in here. I don't really see it anymore, but there should be some in here. I also have a few different mosses growing in here. So just give you a quick look at it that way. Like that. Like that. Give you a view that way. And then we're going to trim this back and you, you'll see what it looks like once I trim it. It's going to look kind of bald and butchered but it fills in within about two or three months it'll fill right back in without that because if once it starts coming in again i keep trying to get rid of it and it's it's got i got to get rid of it permanently so all right so see you in a bit okay so now it's cleaned up a little bit and i still got some work in the background i got to do you can see some of the leaves i need to remove there's some dead uh plant debris still in there that got to come out and I still want to clip back some of the background so it doesn't look like I ripped it out. And there is some detritus on the bottom of the tank that needs to get vacuumed out. So I am going to work on that. I, I'm not going to thin any of the cryptorines or any of that down. I'm pretty much going to leave it pretty much the way you see it now. I'm not going to change too much more of that. Leave it that way. And uh, just clean it up a little bit. I might have to cutbacks on some of the Anubis. Now the Anubis, as you can see here, this thing is absolutely enormous. Look at this thing. That's just one branch of it. That thing goes all the way down to here and then turns and then comes all the way over to here and it's got multiple branches that are coming off. Like there's a branch there. There's multiple branches. So I'm thinking about making some cuttings on this and hopefully I can get it, you know, more green, making some cuttings and then offering the Anubis on eBay. So if you're interested in buying some of the Anubis, uh, just contact me on eBay. You know, I'll leave my eBay channel or eBay site over there where you can get it and then just re make the request. And when 
I see enough people requesting that they want to buy the Anubis. I'll make it available. I'll sell it to you for relatively pretty cheap. It's not going to be very expensive, but I will be able to sell, like, I'm not sure, maybe six or seven portions of this particular variety of Anubis. Now, that's one variety of Anubis. This is another variety of Anubis. I got to check my paperwork and see which is which. I think I have everything marked down. This is another variety of Anubis. And then I have a third variety of Anubis, which is getting quite long as well. This is a third variety of Anubis, and I will make some of that available as well. Now, the other plants, the cryptorines, depends on if they start bumping. If my cryptorines start to bump and they start to fill all of this in, now that I removed all of that clutter in the background, I might make some of my cryptorines available. They're going to be mixed cryptorines. I basically got bronze crypts, and I basically got the green crypts. And I do have other crypts in here, but I don't remember what they are. They're slightly different. Some are like a, a taller version of crypts. Like, like, in other words, these will stay generally low to the ground. And some of the other crypts, like in the background over here, those will get tall. Those will actually can get as tall as... 12 inches they'll grow quite big so these are more of the shorter variety over here and those in the back are the taller then i also got the the crypts that get really long the long and stringy uh they're not doing too good right now but if they get if they start to bump and i start to see them grow out i will offer those as well also i have bulbitis right here this is the it's an african fern is what it is it's an african underwater fern and i will offer if you're interested in some pieces of the bulbitis i will offer you small amounts of bulbitis for a reasonable price on that so if you're interested in that i can definitely offer it now because it's getting quite big and it's starting to take over the back of my tank and it's it's grown all over the place in fact i removed i removed like a six inch six inch long uh piece of it and put it in my pond and see if it'll grow out how it does in the pond if it does really good maybe i'll offer more more of this so i can offer you some of that if you're interested in the um uh, bulbitis this is this is a very expensive plant if you go do a search on um you know for this plant availability of it you'll see that it's quite expensive so uh, I will be offering some of that for a reasonable price. I'll try to beat everybody else's prices. And Rotella's, of course, if you want Rotella, just let me know. I'll sell, you, I'll sell you batches of that. I'm growing it out in my pond right now. I removed all of that, and now that's in my pond. And usually when I put my Rotella's back in the pond, they double, triple, quadruple by the end of the year. And they also flower, and they go to seed. So um not looking to offer anything on that but i'm just saying they'll be at their highest prime outdoor so i'll be able to sell you some really good uh samples of rotella i forgot what that's called it's called nestles or nettles or something like that i don't remember the name i have to look for the name on that um but that's a very nice plant i'm not really offering anything on that right now i do got a couple of samples in my pond and if they increase in the pond, then I'll offer samples to that as well. Actually, anything that's in the pond, I'm going to want to sell by the end of the year because I really don't want to, I can't leave it in the pond. It'll all die throughout the winter. So I got to sell whatever's out in the pond. Uh, we got a sword over here, but this is not an Amazon sword. This is another type of sword. I don't remember what this sword is. This thing could get quite massive. And this has been in here now for at least six years anyway, somewhere around there. It's been around a while, and it's getting big, and it's doing good. In fact, you can see over here, that's that tall stick that's coming up. That's how it, it throws out a runner, basically, and off that runner, it starts putting out shoots. So I don't really want to clutter this tank up with too many of these swords because these things get big and they really block everything else out and so i may want to sell off those once they get big enough and i can get them rooted in pots and maybe i'll put them outdoors so they get a little bigger i'll offer them out as well on ebay if you're interested in them and what else we got in here i i do have some of that swargus bark or swargus stag pilia or whatever that's called it's called round pilia i forgot that it is, it's a german name for it but i can't remember that at one time was doing really good i had that like all over my tank and since it gets crowded out it doesn't really grow very much so 
that uh, round pelia it may not I may not offer anything on that now but I will in the future if I could get that to go back up to being productive again and it's it takes like six months to a year before that amount can actually start doubling so uh, we'll see what happens with the round pelia I also have some more of these uh, these are I think these are considered Anubises Anubis Anubis Anubises I'm not sure they're definitely not crips um, but these things, these things are spreading all over my tank. Uh, I mean, like a lot of this stuff you see here, this is like, that's, that's the plant I'm talking about right there with the sword looking arrow leaf on it. Well, these are pretty much the same thing here. All right. And you could see they're all popping up at all different points in my in my tank. At some point, I'm probably going to remove a few of them if you're interested in them. I, I don't know what their name is offhand. I, I believe they're a, a, I believe they're a type of Anubis. They're just a totally different variety of Anubis, and um, I don't remember. I'd have to look into it. But if you're interested in those, I can sell you them as well. Just request them on eBay, and I'll I'll make them available for you. I'll have to build the listing just for you. I'm not going to offer very many of each. Just a probably a couple of each. Again, if the crypts, if these short uh, green and bronze crypts come in thick, if I keep the plant from getting big and the light stays strong on them, these crypts will double or triple by the end of the year. So I will probably make plenty of those available. When I sell my crypts, I generally don't sell them with the leaves on them. I usually remove the leaves and I just sell you a little bulb on the bottom. But if you prefer the leaves when you're making an order, then just let me know and I will leave the leaves on there. But the leaves are going to die and fall off once you put them into your tank. The main thing you need is that little tuber that's on the bottom, that little root. And that root will have multiple little nodes on it. You can break those nodes up and spread them out. And it's just like seeds. They'll spread by the by the hundreds. That's how I started a lot of this. I, I started off with like a half dozen or a dozen plants and I broke the tubers up. And I put them into the soil, and, they, and each one of those little pieces of tuber sprouted. And I ended up with tons and tons and tons. At one time, I was crypts pretty much all the way across uh, th this whole corner area. And then, um, then it just started evolving into, oh, as I put other plants, it just evolves. Uh, I just want to show you, I don't really have any more uh, uh, dwarf sag. This, use, this whole corner was doing so good with dwarf sag, and because it is rotellas that keep growing in it killed off most if not all of my dwarf sag the whole corner was nothing but dwarf sag it looked really cool and now i don't have any more dwarf sag really but i can make that come back if i clear it out and i don't allow the rotella to get uh, overgrown and take over the tank that, that dwarf sag will come back and it'll look really cool it looked really nice before it looked like a lawn nice little green corner like that coming down let me back up. I'm sorry. It was a nice little green corner that went from like those rocks all the way over here and they were popping up in between the rocks and it just blended in really nice. But the part of uh, the Wallstead method uh, tanks is the tanks evolve and the plants, they will evolve on their own. And that's one of the, the, the things about uh, Wall said that you got to take into consideration is you got to let the tank evolve in its own way. It's going to kind of want to find its own path. Now, my suggestion is if you are doing a Wallstead tank, it's stay away from plants like the, ro the Rotellas because those things will literally spread across your entire tank and kill off all your other plants. They're too big. They're, they're, don't use those. They're fun in the beginning, but then after a while, they're a nuisance. You can't get rid of them. So if you're going to do a tank, if you're going to do a Wallstead tank, uh, I would recommend definitely doing cryptorines because they, they tend to stay really low to the ground and anything tall that pops out in between them, well, that's fine. You know, like we got that, it's kind of popping out tall. It's not totally killing off the cryptorines. This is fine. That's This grows up tall. It doesn't really spread out much very, very often, so it kind of, it, it'll allow the cryptorines to grow below it. Uh, normally, Anubis doesn't really, not really a problem. You really got to clip the Anubis back or else it's just going to take over. Um, so I didn't expect that to actually happen, but yeah, it can happen with your Anubis. So just keep that in mind where you place your Anubis, but your 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 low growth will stay, you know, uh, the primary dominant part of your tank. Whereas you got a couple of big plants that come up that ain't spreaders 
like the Rotellas, and your tank will pretty much stay perfect for many, many, many years. Uh, now, that is, is speak, also on that note is the, um, the Bulbitis. I didn't expect the Bulbitis to start spreading out all over the place like that. I thought it was more of a tall kind of a plant, but it, it's a, a long, along the ground, leggy type of plant, and it's flat, and it just takes everything over. Be careful about that one. I would recommend growing the Bulbitis say up against the tube in the corner along the tube and let it grow up and down and across that way don't leave it on the ground like that because if you do it's going to spread across the the whole bottom of your tank eventually and you can see i need to cut that back so all right so i just wanted to give you guys an update on my 75 gallon wallstead tank to show you what's going on with that maybe i'll do another update at the end of the year once the the tank fills in i'm gonna i'm gonna start dosing the tank haven't been dosing lately I'm going to start giving it some CO2, and I'm also going to give it some, you know, plant nutrients and stuff like that. So I'm going to start to open the tank and uh, get the, maybe change the bulbs and do a little vacuum work in here and get the filters all cleaned out. Again, this tank is roughly probably around 10 years old now. I've never done anything to it, maybe three water changes since I've done the tank, and not very much, only like maybe, you know, up to here or something like that. You know, not very much water change. Filters I clean out once a year, if that. And I pretty much, that's all I do. I don't really do anything else. And the only filters I got is that one in the back. And I have my overflow going to a sump down below. And that's what's been running. The sump has been running for at least three years now. And uh, the, before that, I had that filter in the back running, which I'm going to eventually got to break that all down and fix it because it got a couple leaks on it. And... I don't feel like fixing the leaks because they're PVC and they don't. it's really hard to fix a PVC leak. But if I can get that filter running again, that'll add even more uh, fluidity to the tank. And um, that should really remove a lot of any excess nitrates. But again, this tank is roughly about 10 years old. Never done anything to it other than what you see. And it's been that way and it'll probably stay that way for the next 20 or 30 years. Here's my angels. You could see that if you look at my first video, they're... Pretty much the same size as the last video. They never really change. They're always the same size. All right, so that's it. Like, share, subscribe. See you on the next one.